Be sure and wear your safety glasses at all times and I like to lay my tooling out and double check the sizes so I don't goof up the work because I grabbed the wrong drill bit but I got a starter bit, a quarter inch bit, a half inch bit, 47 64 and then the three quarter reamer along with the uh, taper adapter. Now there's so many ways of lining your work up and you could find the edge in, in different ways and uh, or you can just more this isn't very important at all and by the way you really need to make sure that your bridge board head is trammed up because otherwise you'll be reaming a crooked hole if you want the post to be perpendicular I'm going to use a wiggler with the sharp point and that's the one that I made in a recent video. And remember that a wiggler doesn't care if your drill chuck is inaccurate and this isn't a particularly good drill chuck, it's 50 years old. First of course we have to take the wiggle out, use a sharpie, not your finger and then just manipulating the two cranks and bring it down close to the work but not quite touching you can very easily find the center now you can also uh, do this by pre-center punching it accurately and putting the tip of the wiggler into the center punch hole and then after I find that center I zero out the digital readout in reviewing the footage in that last clip, it seems like no matter what I do when I use a wiggler, and it looks good to my naked eye, I get up into the editing room and I see how far off I really am, so let's do it again. And using a 50 caliber machine gun bullet, perhaps I can get it a little closer. You know, those sharpies are kind of inaccurate. But I think I'm right on now until I see it on a 55 inch monitor and then you can move it around until you get right on the crosshairs that look a little better I realized I was pretty incompetent in that last clip one fourth inch Make sure you do not drill into your parallels. I'm straddling the parallels. Half inch bit. Forty-seven sixty-four slow speed. This is a hundred and thirty-five RPM. And now the three-quarter reamer, never run a reamer backwards, always run them at slow speed and do not try to remove too much with them. I'm taking off only a sixty-fourth. Go through far enough to where you overcome the tapered portion of the reamer. Noga deburring tool. Now before I go any farther I have determined that the wall thickness here is not great enough to use a set screw and that would be the binding screw to hold the post in place so I'm going to drill it from the side but once it's tapered it's kind of uh, at an angle like this it's kind of difficult to get your drill bit started it's going to skate off or break the drill bit or something like that so I'm going to drill the hole now I don't have to 
tap it now, but I'm going to drill it now. So I'll lay it out and observant viewers worldwide have noticed that I have a left-hander and a right-hander. Sometimes I have my wife come down and hold the work and I can just scribe up a storm, you see. But this one is set for half the thickness here, which is 3 eighths. And this one is one half inch. You remember that's the center of the hole is one half inch from the end. And that's ready to drill. And I believe I'll make that a quarter twenty. So I'll drill a 1364, tap it quarter twenty off camera. Now I will counter bore that. I do not want a thread that long. That's just an invitation to the blues when you break your tap off. Now I'm going to lay out these angles and they're about 20 degrees and there's more than one way to do your layout but the distance here is one inch. So if I take my scriber, my height gauge, one inch and then using a protractor of your choice and it's a little bit awkward, I'll simply lay this edge against the work slide it over until the uh, rule is along, you know, connects with the one inch point and I'll scribe it. And the other side as well. I sure like that scriber that Randy sent me. Now you can do it by another method too and that's point to point so one inch down here and it's I believe three-eighths over. And it's going to essentially give you the, the same angle and that's just for clearance as you try to get in different places here and visually it looks better. I'm not going to saw that off. I'm going to mill it off. So let's go back to the bridge port. Now how are you going to set this up in the mill to cut that angle? And one way, this is the time-honored method that I normally use, is just to lay a straight edge here. And i got to use a parallel in conjunction with it and bring that right up to the layout line. And that is pretty darn accurate depending on your eyesight. However, what I don't like about this is I'm hanging way over here and that really doesn't hurt anything. It's just that since I'm at one corner of the vise rather than in the middle it does tend to cock the vise jaw and that really doesn't probably hurt anything but it annoys the heck out of me. Let's look at another way. Here's the other way. I own a set of these taper gauges or they're almost like taper parallels although they are not parallel but Anyway, these are handy, and as luck would have it, yeah, is there such a thing as luck? There is a 20 degree one. Does that show up or not? Yeah, 20 degrees. So, using that in the vise, the way we set things on parallels, but again, it's not parallel, so I'll just pop this into the vise, make sure everything's clean, and I could use a third hand when I do this. I'm going to hang it out like that. Again, I'm a little bit farther over to the side and I'm really way too high here. I, I don't like that, but the, the work is thick and rigid enough so it's not going to go any place. But there could be a little vibration. You always want to mill as close to the vise as you can, but uh, now it's ready to mill. And this is the method I will use. Well, to satisfy the purists, I placed a piece of the three-quarter inch stock over on this end so that the vise cannot cock, and that's the piece that I sawed off before, so it's the same thickness exactly. Still a little higher than I want to be, and I am on top of that 20 degree block, which you cannot see. And finally, at long last, I'm ready to mill.
no matter where I put the tripod, it's in the way. That's why I'm so slow. And I'll take it down to the line and then do the other side as well. It's starting to shape up and look a little bit like a height gauge, is it not? Now I think looking at this tapped hole now, which still has chips in it, perhaps you can see that that would be kind of difficult to drill without forming a pocket first. And I had that counterboard, but I ended up milling most of the counterbore out. Now as far as the bottom is concerned, notice that I'm not flush, but the idea is that once the, the ruler is installed, the scale is installed, where's it at? This one. In order to calibrate it, in case it's just a little bit off one way or the other as I make up the other parts and the scriber and that, that I, I can move the post in, or I should say up and down just a little bit and lock it into place where I want it to get my zero mark. Before I quit here, I want to put uh, the thumb grooves in there, simulating this, and I'll use a ball end mill to do that. It'll make it look a little bit better, and then I'll also round these corners off on the belt sander, and a little bit here on the belt sander, but I will not take the edges or any of the other surfaces to the belt sander. Don't do that, because the belt sander just goes all over the place. You have no accuracy at all. You could draw file it. You could polish it. I'm not much on doing all of that, but uh, some of you like to go that extra mile. What's with the wood chips, you're thinking? Well, this is a three-quarter inch ball end mill, and I was experimenting just a little bit, and I did put a thumb groove into this and I'm satisfied with the way it looks and the depths, the depth and that is 75 thousandths deep. I've already centered uh, the cutter with the center of the work. In other words, I found the edge and moved it in. I won't show that. Perhaps I never explained a ball end mill, or you don't know what it is, but this is a three-quarter ball end mill. They should call it a half ball, but it's a uh, three-eighths radius, but they, they go by the diameter. And you can buy those in virtually any size, two flute or four fluters. They don't leave a terribly smooth cut. They're generally that line in the middle. But I like the looks of it. Now I rounded this corner on the bell center, this, and a little bit here and here. And it's starting to look like what I want it to. And it has a good feel to it. The Mitsutoyo also has an angle at the end, but I'm not going to do anything with that. And their groove is a lot deeper. I had debated on whether to use a, a half inch or a three quarter. Now even though I used a three quarter, I didn't go in very deep or I would have broken out to the, the sides. I did not have a 5 8 cutter or I would have used it. Now I'm ready to move on to the next piece. The next part I'm going to make is this little clamp that holds the scriber in. And this is made out of steel. Maybe it's even stainless, I can't tell, with a screw in the top. And I was trying to think of how to make this, and it's going to be made a little differently than this, because this has actually been formed or bent that U-shape out of one piece and then 
the top part fastened some way or another, I can't tell for sure, nor does it matter because I can't really make it that way without making some kind of die. So I got a little head start on you, and this is brass 3 8 thick, and I've already done some milling, and the pocket here has to be such that both the uh, scriber and this part can fit in there, so I've already got that done. The thickness down here equals the thickness of the sheet brass that I'm going to use on the top, and that will be soldered on, and I hope that'll be strong enough. So now, before I take it out of the milling machine, I'm going to mill off this and this so that we have, uh, I have, about 260 thousandths in there. So you see this a little bit too high now. 260 thousandths so these pieces can fit in there amply. Also, that'll clean up the brass well enough to where it will solder well, I hope. There it is. That was 3 8 thick brass. A rather small part. And out of this sheet stock, which is 50 thousandths thick, I cut a small piece to close the window. So from the end it's going to look like this, and then that little screw where is it? We'll go in here. So right now what I'm going to do is to rough cut this off, and again always a little bigger than what I need. Then I will solder this on and uh, take it down to the dimensions like this. And then it can be held on the milling machine again. I'm ready to solder. I'll use a little of the soldering paste. And for the first time in my life I'm going to use some of this, I'm going to call it ribbon solder. I've had this for forever, multi-core. So we'll see how that works. And it's ready to go, shined up in a couple spots. So I'll clamp it together with that solder in there and heat it up and see if the solder flows. It looks just like a brown blob down there, but using this micro torch, it seemed to uh, to melt and flow together, so let it cool a little bit and see what we got. As this part is cooling, you can see how nicely that solder flowed. And I'll, now I'll just either sand it or mill it down so it all appears to be one piece. There it is, been machined on all four sides, very similar to the original, possibly a little wider and a little bit longer. And both pieces fit in there nicely in the pocket. That's the way it goes. Might be upside down, but that's the general idea. Now I need a thumb screw on the top. I've got a whole box full of thumb screws, but naturally I can't find the exact one I want. Uh, I would like a 632 screw, but uh, it wasn't long enough. Now I'm not going to show that. I'm going to find one out of the box. So if you have to make your own thumb screw, look at my tips 106 where I show how to do that. And matter of fact, one of these in the box, that's the exact one that I used in that, uh, that video. There's a few more in there, but this is the one with this, let's see, that's an 832 thread that I'm going to use, so I'll drill and tap 832 right there. Now I noticed on the original here, both of the originals, they use a little piece of copper or brass here. I may have to do that, but I, I don't know, and I, I think that's to prevent the set screw from skating around on the hardened uh, scriber or the other hardened parts. I'll uh, drill and tap that off camera, but essentially done with that. Starting to shape up. A tight spot there. That's what she looks like. I think maybe the brass clashes with the silver. With the aluminum and the steel, got so many different materials there, but that thumb screw worked nicely. Well, I've been down in the shop virtually all day, so I'm going to call it quits. I'll see you tomorrow.
Okay, I'm progressing nicely, and then uh, the next step is to find a ruler that's a quarter inch wide that will fit in this slot. And I have scores of six inch scales and rules all over the place, and some drawers totally dedicated uh, to that matter, as well as loose ones out in the garage and on the windowsill and, and setting on my dresser. But digging through all of these, I was only able to come up with uh, several quarter inch rulers, but let me show you what I found. When I was teaching machine shop, I required the kids to buy one of these, and they were only about a quarter back then. And there, it's a general or some other make that, uh, you know, and that wasn't very critical. And there were many advertising rulers, so some would bring in uh, rulers from home. But some of the kids brought in these quarter inch wide, and I went to several stores the last few days, and nobody had it. They had plenty of these, but none of the real narrow ones. But that was really what... I wanted uh, to fit into this quarter inch slot. And remember that slot was made with a quarter inch end mill. Now here's some other sources and, and this is a cheap ruler. This is an advertising ruler uh, old enough to where the phone number is uh, 9118 or 9118 whatever company that is. So uh, and these are just printed rulers. How accurate they are, are they? But still pretty darn accurate. And I'll show you a comparison here in a minute. But I was also looking for this type of ruler. But I'm thinking not only of what I'm going to use, but what other people at home might be using. And that's why I'm spending so much time talking about that. And there's a hook ruler. And yet, this uh, would be a good ruler to use because it reads uh, vertically. And there's no hick on, uh, hook on the end. Uh, it's in 30 seconds on one side and 60 fourths. Well, I can't read 60 fourths with my eyes anymore, so I want 30 seconds. And actually, I would settle for 16 Naturally, I had tons of these uh, depth rules and, and protractors, and they all employ a quarter inch wide rule. And I got a bunch more out in the garage, and you're probably thinking, I don't even have one because Tubal Cain's been hoarding them. But they just accumulated. They're a dime a dozen. Every time you get a toolbox, there's a few of them in there. But you certainly could use one of these rulers and then just throw the head away or keep it for posterity. And the, the general brand, again, is still a pretty darn good rule. It doesn't have to be a Sterrett or a Brown and Sharp or a Mitutoyo. So there's another source of rules for you. And last, but certainly not least, there are just a host of these giveaway rules now. And they're quarter inch wide. And I was at a trade show, the Midwest Truck and Trailer Show, to, to meet some men, uh, the owners of Alumatank. And of all things, while we were standing there talking, uh, he gave me a couple of these. And, he's, and I told him about this project, and he said, that's why he gave me an extra one. He said, well, cut one of these off if you need to. So thank you, Terry. Well, actually, I'm already a step ahead of myself, and this has become the donor. And that you will hear hitting the trash can now. And I have installed it in the quarter inch slot. And the neat thing is that it was a press fit. I took a popsicle stick and kind of forced it in there. And it's just fine because I was thinking that with these other rules, and I may go back to these, I don't know. But if I do change my mind, I would probably have to epoxy these in because they were not such a, a good fit. And you know, tape rolls are uh, somewhat uh, curved, so it, so it fit in there just great. And you say, well, that's not accurate. Well, what I'm going to do here, or I have done, is taken a Sterrett ruler, which uh, these are machine cut, I believe, and the uh, uh, graduations can be, the spacing on the graduations can be traced back to the United States Bureau of Standards. So we know that this is an extremely accurate ruler. But laying it, uh, and I did this in real good light, uh, laying it right alongside the, uh, the tape ruler, I can discern no difference, even up to the 6 inch, and there doesn't seem to be any accumulated error, even though this would have been cheaply made, and the graduations probably rolled on. So that's what I'm going with, at least for now. I may change it at some later date, but not for the purposes of this video. And the beauty is that these white graduations show up so well. And this one being old enough, 
to where it's made in USA of all things and I cut the hook off of the end it was riveted on and I just used a little Dremel tool ground it off and it fell right out and I'm not too concerned about the graduations way down near the end anyway but that's what I'm going with and I must confess that I made a new post because the other post was just a little bit short and uh, this one I'm going to still cut off probably right about at that six and a quarter mark and, and face it and that will be my final one and then I'm going to take the other one and cut that off to about three inches so I have about a, a three incher as well and I can interchange the posts and my other reason for making a new post if you re will recall I put this flat on the front side originally thinking I would have the set screw right here rather than off to the side now do you really need a flat well if you don't have a flat in an application like this you can see that a set screw or maybe you can't always leaves an impression so if you don't have a flat and you got an impression there sometimes you cannot get the uh, part out of there unless you pound it out so I always like to put the set screw on a, on a flat and it seems to bite in better too but alas and you can see that's adjustable I'm still not quite done and the next and final part that I have to make is the scriber and I will make that out of precision ground flat stock uh, oil hardening tool steel this one of course being carbide I could always buy a replacement like this and use it but I would suspect that from mid to toyo that's probably a fifty dollar scriber so I will make my own also I am contemplating on the adjustment here remember there's a flat back here for for this screw should I read it directly read the rule directly right off the top face of this or should there be a pointer of some kind perhaps a separate piece made of brass or something well that's one more step and maybe it's not necessary but it was a thought so on with the scriber